So yeah, just to mention, we are recording this call and wherever I am is the part that will be recorded. We'll have some breakout circles uh, later and uh, the one that I'm in will be recorded. So I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. Uh, so welcome to our MPC Circle uh, uh, facilitation training introduction. This is an introduction to the empathy circle practice and the training on how to facilitate an empathy circle. And uh, I'm Edwin Rutch, the director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. I've been working for I don't know, 13, 14 years on the topic of empathy and with the started the center and, uh, and director of it and have been just trying to see how we can create a more empathic uh, society and uh, culture. And uh, so this is also, today's session is also part of the Oxford, uh, let me see what they call it, the, um, I'm gonna bring up the Oxford Empathy Program. Uh, it's uh, the Empathy and Healthcare Third Biennial Colloquium. So they just had a, a colloquium, uh, uh, from uh, the last two days. And you know, I was like, we we're one, one of the organizers of that. And today is a, a satellite session for that. So our topic is going to be more around the healthcare. Usually we talk more about the training, but we're going to be talking about the role of empathy in uh, healthcare in our circle. So let me give a show that little uh, overview of what we're going to be doing today. So I'm sure people will be popping in over the next little bit. So this is uh, our introduction. We're going to be going for two hours and we're doing the welcome. That's what we're doing right now. We're going to go through and introduce some of the uh, of our facilitators and then we'll be talking, giving a tour of the empathy uh, training uh, website. We'll have some time for questions and answers. This will be very quickly. We'll go into the how to take part in an empathy circle and then uh, do a little fishbowl sample of how, how it works. So you can, we'll show a video and then an example of it. And then we'll actually go into empathy circles and uh, you'll get a real chance to practice the, uh, the, uh, the process. And then we'll come back for about a 20 minute uh, full group debrief afterwards. So let me here, so. So I'm going to start with just have some of the facilitators just introduce themselves, uh, their name, their location, and uh, why they're interested in empathy circles. And I'll start. I'm Edwin Rutsch, like I said, from San Francisco Bay Area. And I just find empathy circles the most effective gateway practice for learning empathy skills and just want to spread it as widely as possible. And I always say, want all 8 billion people in the world to learn this practice thinks it would be just really helpful for creating a, a better, greater well-being in the world. So uh, Celine, would you do a quick intro? Uh, yes, my name is Celine. I live in the United States in the Southern Oregon, and I have a background in education and mediation. And I think what I love most about the Empathy Circles practice is that it teaches how to listen to someone with whom you completely disagree. So I think that's a great skill to have. I'm glad you're all here. Thank you. Is that Bill? Yeah, my name is Bill Filler. I'm a retired special education teacher. I've been involved with the Empathy Circles for about four years doing the trainings and also um, going out in the street during protests, both left and right, to try to get uh, listen to people and hopefully engage them in some dialogue. I'm very interested in um, yeah, having empathy in the schools. And so if everybody, um, if anybody is interested, uh, I'll put my information in the chat and uh, including my email, I have a Thursday thing, but anyway, that'll all be in the chat. Thanks, great to see you here. Thanks, uh, Bell, Linda? Yes, my name is Linda Bass. I live in uh, Keller, Texas, uh, near Fort Worth, Texas. I spent 30 plus years in property and casualty insurance. I'm retired. Now I am a practicing mediator and arbitrator. And I found that the um, empathy circle or the empathic listening is very helpful for me, especially in mediation, listening to the uh, disputing parties and helping them um, 
hear each other. So it's a great experience uh, professionally and socially. Thanks, uh, Larry. I am Larry in Florida. I'm a retired occupational therapist and relatively new to the empathy circles. I enjoy them immensely. I find them to be um, brilliantly simple and very effective in bringing human beings into full awareness of their empathic true nature. Thank you. Okay, Melissa. Hello, uh, my name is Melissa Fernandez. I am from the Cal Bay Area, California Bay Area. I have been in healthcare for many years. And, um, you know, I have noticed that with the fast moving pace and with advances in technology, people haven't had much time to stop and listen, but they want to or they can't. And so how important having the empathy skill is. And uh, I believe this is a wonderful practice for everyone to learn, you know, these new skills, which perhaps we have forgotten. And so here I am and welcome everyone. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, Cynthia? I am Cynthia Ganote. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky in the US. And I am a sociology professor who, uh, just believes that empathy and understanding what it's like to be in somebody else's shoes is just absolutely critical. So I uh, started take, taking part a while back in the empathy circles and just believe it's a beautiful process for people to really stop and listen to each other, do that deep listening and come to understand each other at a deeper level. And since we're a little smaller group, we can do the participants too. So Bogan, Bogdan, if you'd like to do a quick intro and you're muted. Yes, um, so I'm, I'm Bogdan, George Bogdan. I'm from Romania, as I, as I was mentioning uh, just before uh, we start. I'm a teacher uh, in a very small village in uh, one of the counties, Kovasna County. Uh, it's my uh, first uh, involvement in, the, in this in this uh, with in this sort of scenarios with uh, approaching this topic. Um, I used to live in the UK for uh, 10, 11 years, and um, I saw a, um, a way to organize the, the society as such and very functional and uh, the way I perceived the, the, the experience over there, it was that uh, it was a, a very uh, powerful, strong dialogue about, uh, um, let's say, empathy. I define now that this was all about. And I'm trying, I'm trying to understand more. All right, the, Bogan, we just want to go very quickly through because we have a large group. So just a quick, you know, one sentence why you're interested in the empathy and empathy yeah, circle. Yeah. So I hear that you went to the UK and that uh, yeah. you saw some yeah. that the importance of empathy there. So we'll yeah. have time for everyone to be heard. So just, uh, just thanks, uh, Justice, Justice, if just a quick intro, name, location, why you're, why you're interested in empathy circles. Yeah, my name is Justice Harris. I'm in North Carolina um, and Raleigh specifically, but have been in Chicago for a decade before that. And I'm an artist, designer, and healthcare consultant in patient experience. So living with uh, type 1 diabetes, I have um, kind of made my way into this work through being a research participant and then collaborator in medical research. Mm. Great, thanks. Uh, Elizabeth? Elizabeth, do you, Forrester? Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Quick intro, uh, name, location, why interested in empathy I'm in circles? Sacramento, California. I have no experience with this at all. Mm -hmm. I was a philosophy professor um, and I started the program at a community college, um, environmental liter literacy. And so I've sort of come a long way around to getting to these empathy groups. I'm very excited to learn about what you're doing and how you're doing it. And especially um, the gentleman who talked about the schools because it, there's a dire need at every level, I think. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Laura. 
Hi, I'm Laura Osborne. I'm a retired psychologist. I'm going back to work. I'm interested in this because I normally, I tr my specialty is drug addiction. And the uh, way to defeat drug addiction is through connection. And this is the perfect thing for that. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Trey? Hi, I'm Trey Griffith. I live in Barbados, born here. I'm a teacher and I'm very interested in improving my listening skills and then helping others to do the same, facilitating to help others to do the same. Great, thank you, Trey. Uh, Dwayne? Uh, hi, my name is Dwayne Hearn. Um, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, but I'm currently in uh, Minneapolis or just outside of Minneapolis in Ramsey, Minnesota. Um, I've been, I was introduced to this type of activity when I was in high school. And um, I've had an interest since high school in personal growth and development. And first and foremost, I'm here to improve my own listening skills. Thank you. Thanks, Dwayne. Floyd? Yeah, my name's Floyd. I'm living in Ojai, California. That's uh, inland from Santa Barbara, for those that are familiar with the left coast. Um, boy, I'm a trauma survivor from youth and ended up in a war, survived trauma from a war. I work with trauma, I work with trauma survivors, addiction, suicide, about everything you can imagine that uh, and I hold the ground for all of that. And anytime you talk about to use the word empathy, you have to interface it with the word compassion. So, um, and I'm also what they call uh, intuitive empath, that having crossed over and come back several times. So I see more than the world. <laughs> mm, thank so, you. Thank you for letting me share that. Thank you. You'll have more time to share in the circles. We'll have uh, yes. about an hour and a half in the circles to share anything you would like. Uh, Vera? Hi, everyone. I'm Vera Fair. I'm in Huntington Beach, California. I love these empathy circles because uh, I really think that uh, through empathy, listening, connection, you can really resolve a lot of issues and problems and, and make the world a better place. So thank you very much for doing this. And uh, Dana, Dina, you're, we're just uh, doing quick introductions, name, location, why you're interested in the empathy circle. Hi, my name is Dina Creasy. I'm in Dallas, Texas. And a friend of mine told me about this. I work with, um, uh, I, have, I run a healthcare program for uh, low income people who want to be in a career. And I also do a lot of ministry with people. And I just want to make sure I'm consistently being empathetic the way they need to receive it. And so when she told me about this, I said, empathy circle, this sounds interesting. Let me check this out. So that's why I'm here. Oh, great. Uh, and Sistar? Sister Kenya, greetings, Edwin. I'm back. <laughs> um, I'm Sister Kenya Sue. I'm based in London in the UK. This is my, if Edwin can remind me, my third or fourth drop-in cafe thingy. Um, and I was hoping to do the facilitation. So is this one with Oxford, yes? Uh, this one is it's going to be, the top is going to be healthcare with Oxford. Yep, that's uh, part wow. of the conference. So, so um, yeah. Um, so. so glad to be here, everybody. Uh, we say greetings. Uh, greetings thank you <laughs> so i'm a mental health um i can't even remember i am a mental health um first aider and i'm a researcher um and a community activist and um yeah i'm glad to be here looking forward to listening to you all and meeting new people and widening my network online as the world gets smaller Mm, great, thank you. Is there anybody I left out? I, did anybody not get a chance? Okay, great. So uh, next uh, will be uh, a review, just a quick overview of our training website. Uh, Bill, do you want to show that? Sure, I'll, I'll be sharing my screen, so bear with me. 
All right, and hopefully you can see it now. I'll minimize that. Okay, um, so this is the link uh, for the to get to this page, this landing page, um, and. Um, we want to, um, this is uh, the facilitation training. So this teaches you how this training focuses on teaching you how to become a facilitator, some of the values and things like that of the empathy circle so that you can, you know, do it on your own. Um, this is this uh, website and uh, this is a training video. And I believe this is the 25 minutes. So this will be, this is a brief overview of this website. And this would take you through it step-by-step step with the Edwin's excellent narration. Um, our vision is uh, a vision of empathy, a culture of empathy, where people are engaging in um, mutual and respectful dialogue. Um, we wanna train all seven plus uh, billion people. Um, so it's, you know, get to work, you're, you're already late. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, and this is open source. Um, Edwin talks about this being a basic uh, practice and so that you can fold it into whatever you're doing. Um, and um, so you can you know, take that and uh, see. Uh, it is free, the training is free to everyone, but we do accept uh, donations. Um, getting started, if you're interested in taking the, uh, the facilitation training, there's a two uh, empathy circle prerequisite, and um, this is one of them. So uh, also, if you hold an empathy circle outside of this, it's the honor system. So we trust that you did that with your family, friends, workers, something like that. Um, this is the introduction cafe, which you'll find out about. Um, the time commitment, this is uh, very important. If you do decide to take the facilitation training, um, it's five sessions of two and a half hours each. We also have about another half an hour to an hour. We have an empathy buddy call, um, things like that. So if you do decide to take it, please commit to the full uh, sessions because we group people up and we put them together. And so if people drop out, it's very difficult. We have to kind of rearrange everything. Uh, that being said, we can uh, handle, we are flexible. And if you have a very serious issue, just let us know um, and then we'll deal with it. Um, the training path is uh, you can take the facilitation training and then you can go on, you can come back as a trainee and learn to uh, present various parts of the training, the facilitation training, and then you can go on to become a trainer once you've been able to do that um, and, you know, present your own training if you wish. Uh, there's a certificate of completion um, that everyone attends and I'll just say you are probably all jealous of my wonderful t-shirt here and Edwin's wonderful t-shirt. And uh, you can get those, Edwin has those available for about 20 bucks a pop. Uh, so anyway, show your support. Uh, and we wanna build a supportive uh, community and that's why we try to connect with facilitators and support each other even after the training. Um, these, this is the link to sign up for the training. Uh, again, it'll be right here. And um, then the next part will be described in the video about the, uh, the facilitation training, what each session does and things like that. And now I think I'll uh, hand it back to Edwin for the, um, and I'll stop the share uh, for the, uh, or I don't know who's doing You the... could take some questions and answers. If oh, okay, any... uh, we'll do then. All right, we'll go into that. I forgot about that. Okay, sorry, thank you. Um, Okay, so I asked for people to put my links. Okay, we'll do that. Um, and uh, any other, que any questions, first of all? No. Oh, question. Trey? Uh, okay, Trey and, uh, I'm sorry. I can't sorry. see your t-shirt. Oh, you can't see my t-shirt, here it is. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, and, also and then on the back, there's something. Oh, there's wow, like, there's more. Yeah, yeah, well, there's then, more. Yeah. If you can put the links in the text box. That for would the for what the uh You're talking about the links for the training blah, yeah blah, blah. yeah okay edwin i'm sure we'll... box, that will help me sure absolutely will do thank you yes and trey hey yeah um i had signed up for the last court but i was i i'm not sure where i stand within that so i just wanted to understand what that what was the next step 
Yeah, the next step was for you to attend today's meeting. Since you're here, you're in the cohort. So just to let you know. Yay. Yay, yay. <laughs> Good okay. Work. okay, so I'm going to put, yeah, and I'm going to put, uh, my, this is my email. And I do have a session like this on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Um, and that's my Zoom address. Uh, if you can't make that or if you just have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I'm a special ed teacher. I saw too much heartbreak. These kids need this. I will go anywhere, do anything I need to do so that kids can start to learn this skill. And um, maybe that was overselling. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> are there any more questions? Now, if there are none, then we'll go oh, into it. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Justice, go ahead. And if this will be introduced into later on, then I'll just, we'll hear it then. But in okay. terms of different modalities of listening and communication, because I work in movement and um, some nonverbal right. uh, communication, I was wondering if you'll touch on how this can be you know, adapted that way. Um, well, yeah, um, if you, um, I, one of the ways that uh, I'm working in an empathy game, and we use uh, Viola Spolin's uh, theater games, uh, if you don't know, I'll put that in there, and that is a, a way, and Edwin has used that, Alan Alda, a lot of actors have been trained at that, and uh, so we do do that. It's hard to get into movement over Zoom, um, you know, so it's mostly you, what you see here. But uh, it could definitely be uh, adapted. Like you had a group in an empathy circle. You, there are various things you can do. Uh, I myself, I won't go into it, but I learned uh, a, a, a medita moving meditation by this guy by the name of Al Huang. And that's an excellent, I use that at the beginning workshop sometimes. So it can be integrated, like it's a basic practice and then you can integrate it the way you see fit. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Then uh, hey. I guess we'll move on. Yeah, yeah. we'll Thanks. move on. Hey, Dean. Uh, so uh, next we're going to show how to take part in an empathy circle. It's a six minute video. It's very, sh uh, just sort of the minimal instructions. And we'll show that uh, next. So here we go. I'm Edwin Rutch, founding director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. I'd like to uh, welcome you to this short presentation on how to take part in a basic empathy circle. So next, let's look at uh, the step-by-step, -step, how to take part. Uh, an empathy star circle starts with two to seven participants. Here on the screen, we have four participants, which I find is an ideal number. There are four basic roles, and the roles rotate among the participants as the empathy circle unfolds. One, the speaker is the first person to speak. Two is an uh, active listener who actively listens to the speaker. There's the silent. I just, are you seeing my whole screen or the, uh, just the video, just to check? Just the, uh, we can't see the one you generally hold. show it. I yeah, think. whole screen. We're okay, seeing great. So okay. You got it? Okay, let me be sure to wanna. Uh, so hopefully, yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, that'll be easier. Listeners, they quietly observe and witness. And the facilitator who organizes, schedules, and hosts the circle. Uh, they also do the timekeeping, and they have some experience with the process and help keep participants in the process. However, everyone has the responsibility to hold the, the, the process and the practice. So to begin with, the facilitator will start the empathy circle. They welcome the participants. Uh, they uh, lead introductions if the participants don't know each other. The facilitator invites participants to give short introductions, for example, their name, where they're from, and something personal about themselves. Uh, the facilitator then reviews the empathy circle process to remind everyone uh, how it works. They announce the discussion topic if there is one. Even if there is a topic, you can always talk about what is alive for you. That is what is on your mind in the moment. And five, 
uh, you can, they set the speaker time limits, perhaps uh, five minutes, for example. And the facilitator then asks who would like to start the, to be the first speaker. So at that point, the participant volunteers to be the first speaker. As speaker, you select who you will, who will be your active listener, and you can select anyone that you want. Uh, you speak about the topic given or whatever is alive for you, and so you'll speak a bit until you have maybe expressed an idea or two, and then you want to pause to give the active listener a chance to recap what they understand uh, that you are saying and feeling. Uh, if you say too much, the listener may have difficulty in reflecting it. As the active listener, you are listening to the speaker to get an understanding of what they are saying and what is important to them. You are giving them your full attention as a supportive companion on their inner journey and exploration. Uh, when the speaker pauses, uh, you recap your understanding of what they said and how they feel by reflecting the essence of that in your own words. Uh, you can summarize, paraphrase, or even say the speaker's words back to them. Even though you may have a strong impulse to respond with your own ideas, judgments, analysis, advice, and sympathy, or, or even questions, you know, resist the impulse to do so. Uh, because uh, uh, these common responses block the speaker from moving along their internal journey. You will be able to say whatever you want when it is your turn to be the speaker. So if you don't reflect the understanding to the speaker's satisfaction, you, they can always say it again. Then as speaker, you check, do you feel understood to your satisfaction? If you do not feel understood, you can say it again, perhaps in different words. Uh, if you do feel understood, continue sharing. Again, after speaking a bit, pause to give your active listener a chance to recap their understanding of what you said. As the active listener, you again share your understanding of what the speaker said and meant. The cycle of speaking and reflecting continues until you as the speaker do not have anything else you'd like to say or until you get a signal from the timekeeper. Uh, if you get a signal from the timekeeper, then finish up what you're saying in a sentence or two. After you get a final reflection, you can end your turn by saying something like, I feel fully heard or something like that to indicate you are done with your speaking turn. At that point, the roles uh, then rotate. The active listener becomes the speaker. The person they select becomes the new active listener. For everyone having equal time, it is good to select someone that hasn't spoken lately, but it is your choice. The others in the circle become the silent listeners. This process of turn taking turns in speaking and active listening continues for whatever time is allotted for the empathy circle. And this was uh, just a very short introduction. The best way to learn the practice is taking part and doing it. Uh, there is more in-depth material on taking part in an empathy circle and facilitating one at empathycircle.com. Thank you for listening. Okay, so what we want to do next is do a, a short uh, demonstration, a uh, fishbowl, and Celine is going to be leading that with a few of the facilitators. We'll have a, yeah, go ahead, Celine. Yes, so um, let's see if we can have three volunteers to be part of the little fishbowl. It's only going to be, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And if you would put one of these hands up, then... Um, yeah, just the facilitators, some of the, just the model. Oh, well, just the facilitators. Okay. So let's get some facilitators up here, please. Yeah. And we are going to have three, min three minute turns. And the topic will be, what do you see as the importance of empathy in healthcare? or whatever is alive for you. 
And I love that option is always available. So there's freedom and um, respect. And we will start with me as the first listener. And who will, who will be the first speaker? Does this mean you, you're yes. the first speaker, Cynthia? Yes, because I had my hand oh. over video. Yes. Linda. 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 Okay, great. Linda. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Uh, what does health, empathy and health care mean to, mean to me is um, that the physician or the PA physician's assistant that I'm seeing is taking time to listen to what I'm saying. Uh, so um, I'm hearing you say that for you, Empathy in healthcare means that the physician or physician's assistant who is working with you in that moment is listening to you. Yes, and they, they listen and they show genuine concern uh, for what I'm you know, describing as my purpose for being there. Um, and I, I mean genuine concern as opposed to Let's check the block and write a prescription and send her on her way. Yeah, so what you mean by really listening to you, genuinely caring, is that um, they don't just write a prescription and send you away, but they take the time to really understand what uh, this means for you to have whatever yes. situation or condition. And they're not, you know, uh, what dismissive or condescending because I don't have a medical degree. They really um, understand or ex they, un they accept the fact that I know what's going on with my body. So for you uh, to be really listened to in this context means for the, the health care provider to not be dismissive or condescending and to believe you and trust you that you know what it is that's going on in your body and what you want to do about it. And thank you, Selena, I feel fully hurt. Thank you, Linda. Okay, so you're the speaker now. I mean, I'm the speaker now and I choose a listener and I will choose Cynthia. Hey, ready to listen. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, I think it's critical, crucial that empathy be part of the world of healthcare. So for you, it's crucial that empathy be part of the world of healthcare, a central part. Yes. Uh, when I think of my own experience, I think of my experience as a patient and wanting a lot of the same things that Linda spoke to, I'll pause there. Do you think of your own experience as a patient and about wanting the same kinds of things that you heard Linda talk about? Yes, thank you. And I also think of healthcare practitioners who have been put in an almost impossible situation in the last year and a half or two. So you're also coming from the perspective, when you place yourself in the perspective of healthcare providers who have been in uh, such difficult situations in the last year or two, that's part of your thinking. Yes. And I think that if uh, people listen to each other empathically in this situation, there might be less of a divide between the healthcare practitioners and the patients and the say hospital administrators. So empathy for you can bring together um, the different parties involved in healthcare uh, in greater understanding. Yeah, and, and understanding, respect, and care for each other, which will, of course, uh, make a better experience for patients. 
So the understanding, respect, and care for each other um, will increase by patients, care providers, hospital um, administrators, up all the parties really, really um, practicing empathy. Yes. Thank you, Cynthia. I feel fully heard. Mm, thank you so much, Celine. So as I am the active speaker now, I'm going to ask if Bill, would you listen? I'd be happy to listen. So I, um, I think a lot as a sociologist about um, empathy and healthcare, and I've also had a personal experience in these last eight weeks. So as a sociologist, you've thought about the social dynamics of uh, empathy and healthcare, and then also you've had a personal experience with the medical system in the last eight weeks. Yeah, my mother who uh, has been utterly healthy um, for most of her life on uh, just about eight weeks ago had a heart attack and now has had three hospitalizations in the last eight weeks um, that have really um, taught me a lot about the healthcare system. So your mother, uh, who's been healthy for most of her life, had a heart attack about eight weeks ago, and then subsequently during those last eight weeks has been hospitalized three times. And so now you're having to engage with the medical system, mano a mano. That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. And in so many situations I have, um, in different times been trying to make sure they're really, that whoever is caring for her is really listening to her and really making sure that um, all the things that she's expressing were getting um, heard. Yeah, and so a lot of your job, you felt, was to make sure that uh, the caregivers were really listening to her and that she was being heard and understood. Yes, and I felt at some point like I know I have both the privilege of having a mother who has good health care in the U.S., and I'm also here to say, uh, I, I have another question for you, doctor, uh, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. It really made me think of those who do not have someone to advocate for them. Mm. So you were thinking of, you know, your mother has, you know, you're fortunate in the sense that she has very relatively good health care. But you still found that uh, even with that good health care, uh, patients uh, need advocates in order to uh, help address their real needs. And the health care system doesn't do it by itself. That's absolutely right. And so it made me think a lot more about the power of uh, the crucial aspect of deep listening to patients, as Linda and Selena have been talking about, um, listening for each symptom, those kinds of things in the process. Yeah. So you're thinking about uh, things that Linda talked about as far as being able to deeply listen and validate and understand what a patient is experiencing. That's right. Thank you so much. I feel heard, Bill. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. Sure. Okay, I think we can end there and go into the breakout room. So we did three turns. Uh, as you notice, uh, uh, Selene held up the time sign. That was at the, at the three minute mark. So the facility, if your time is, is up, the facilitator will hold that up. And so we're going to go into the breakout rooms. And uh, it, the topic again, it's in the chat. And we're going to have uh, four minute turns. Uh, we're, going, we're going to have uh, four groups uh, and the first one will be facilitated by Linda and I'll be in that group as support. Second one is uh, by Cynthia. Uh, can you feel ready to facilitate? And Celine will be a support backup. Uh, the fourth room or the third room will be by Dean. Are you up for facilitating Dean or you wanna take somebody else to do it? You're okay? And a bill will be in there too. So as a backup, so support, I mean, a co-facilitator. And then the next room is uh, Melissa with uh, Larry as a support. And so we have uh, three rooms with five and one room with uh, four participants. We're going to go for about an hour and uh, about 65 minutes. 
I'll send a notice five minutes before closing. We'll come back and then do a quick debrief. And uh, here we go into our rooms and open all rooms. And I'll be here with you, Linda. We'll stay in the main okay. room. And this is our group, five participants. Okay, hey, great. Okay, I hope you are all ready for a unique, unique experience. This is probably the first time you will actually be heard, okay? So we will start like we did in the fishbowl. And I will be the first uh, listener. And you have, I have four minutes to speak. Each person will have four minutes to speak. And when your time is up, I will hold up this. And like um, Bill said, I think it was Bill, if you're in the middle of a sentence, in the middle of a thought, you have the opportunity to finish that. And you're speaking, the listener will have an opportunity to respond. So don't just cut it off just because the four minutes is up. But you know, you do need to you know, bring it to an end, if that makes sense, okay? So um, does anybody have any questions before we begin? All right, great. Well, I, do. I will be, yes. It's just if, and this come up, if you don't feel understood, it's as simple as just saying, I don't feel understood. And you don't have to say, if, if you, if the um, <clears throat> listener, says back to you and it's not what you said or what you you have the opportunity to say it over again maybe in a different way that, you can okay. say no what I really meant was blah 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 and at the end if you don't feel fully heard you know when the four minutes is up don't say you feel fully heard you can say I feel fully heard or I hear I feel I heard to my satisfaction or I, I don't think the listener got me and that's okay because for everybody in this circle except for Edwin and myself, it will be your first time going around, okay? So um, I will start off by being the uh, first listener and I will start my clock. And Justice, do you wanna be the first speaker? Yeah, yes. And speak in chunks because our little brains can only absorb so much. So like 20 <laughs> seconds and then, okay? All okay. right. And you get to speak on what empathy and healthcare uh, means to you. Okay. Or whatever is alive for you. All right. Go. That is very alive. Empathy and healthcare uh, means to me that all parts of someone's life are able to be part of um, the healthcare process. So desires, disease, family, um, joys, they all are relevant. Okay, so what healthcare, what empathy and healthcare means to you is that all parts of a person's life, the emotions and every and the physical all come into play. Yes, all all the aspects that may not just be your disease. So, you know, going into an office with diabetes, you can still talk about your relationships, for example. Okay, so it's all about a connection for you, even though you're going in for a specific medical uh, need, it's all about connecting with the medical provider. Well, and that the medical provider can also connect with the parts of you that aren't the exact condition you have because they oh. impact how you care for it. Or okay, so it's all about the medical provider too, connecting with you. You come in for the type diabetes um, situation, but the medical provider can also connect with you in terms of other things that's going on in your life. It's not just the medical part. Right. And um, I guess it's also a willingness to not judge people for things that look like they're bad health decisions. Um, such as eating or sexual behavior or, um, you know, areas that might not make sense to someone's personal choice. It's also about being non-judgmental about things that the medical provider may not agree with, like your 
sexual choices, what you eat, uh, uh, you know, the way you live your life. You just, it's not, it's about listening and not being judgmental. Right. And um, it's, you know, I, th I think more and more realizing that sometimes bringing in movement and other modalities of being able to express um, words aren't always the best way to to express what's going on emotionally as well. Yeah, so it's not only words uh, that we use to express uh, emotions, but there can be other modalities used that can be sometimes more effective in expressing uh, our needs or our emotions. Right. And empathy, um, more and more that I hope those are allowed for in um, the way people have um, psychology appointments or even healthcare appointments that the whole body and whole range of expression can be used. Okay, so your hope is that empathy will be... Um included in all medical care, whether it's the uh, physical or mental, the whole range of it, uh, you want empathy to become a part of that. Yes, empathy and um, being able to share, I guess empathy with the self too, that's a critical one. To empathize with the self, uh, speaking from my experience happens more in movement than in words. Okay. So different people have different ways of expressing themselves. For you, it's movement uh, versus words. That's a way of expressing yourself. Yes, I feel understood. Thank you. All right, now, um, Justice, you get to pick a, uh, you're the listener. You get to pick someone to speak to you and you reflect back to them what they are saying. It's the other way, Linda. You're the you are the listener, so you're the speaker now. I always get that flip. You do. Okay. <laughs> okay so um, I'm the. I always get that turned around. Excuse me. So now I'm the speaker, and I will pick um, Dina okay. to listen to me. Dina, do you? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, what um, empathy means to me in, 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 in regards to healthcare is um, that, as I said earlier, that the medical provider um, respects me as a per person and as an individual that's aware of what's going on in my body. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is that you want the medical provider to respect you as an individual person and that you are fully aware of what's going on inside of you. Yes, um, and, and, and not be dismissive or talk down to me, but make me feel like um, what I have to say is important. Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing you say that you don't want to be talked down to, dismissed, or like you don't know what you're talking about. You want them to lean in and respond and be engaging that they're understanding what you're feeling and what you're trying to express. Yes, I, um, I'm on Medicare and sometimes I feel like uh, some of the other recommendations they are making is because they know Medicare will pay for it in terms of x-rays, ultrasounds, MRIs. And I'm thinking, I don't need that. I've been going to the doctor long enough to know that's not going to be effective, but you know, they refer me and I, I go. Okay. So you, you don't want to feel like you're just being used for the benefit that you have through Medicare, having unnecessary exams or tests that are not for you, and it's just benefiting the bottom line for because Medi the doctor or doctors because Medicare is paying for it. Yes, and um, as far as my mother who is now deceased, um, it amazed me that uh, 
when she was well and mobile, my sister would have to take off work or would take off work because she was the provider and take her to the heart doctor, the kidney doctor, the blood doctor, the, you know, it was all these specialties. And then when she went into a nursing home, I asked my sister, I said, well, how is all of this working? You know, do she need all these specialties? And, they, and she said, no, they just have one doctor. So what you experienced from your sister and mom being caring for your mom is that your mom was, she had all these different doctors when like she was fully mobile, like you said, she was fully mobile, but she had a doctor for almost every part of her body. But then when she got to the point where she had to go into a nursing home, all of those doctors went away and she just had one doctor for her long-term care. Yes. And, and it, I never understood that, but you know, that was the way it was. So again, I think, um, Medical providers, I know they have this conglomerate now with all these doctors are in one organization or whatever, and it's about business and money. But I, sometimes I feel like we are the patient, me as a patient, is be, we're on a, I'm on a, an assembly line. They have 15 minutes to see me and then you know, 15 minutes for this and 15 minutes for that. Um, and so I feel sometimes like I'm being, if I don't see my regular, provider, if it's a new person, I feel like I'm being just pushed down, you know, pushed through the uh, the line. Okay, so when you go to the doctor now, if you're not seeing your primary care physician, you feel like you're just part of many people that's on their schedule to see. So they're just trying to get you in, get you out within a certain time frame. So you don't feel heard, you don't receive the empathy or the understanding that you require. Thank you, Dean. I feel fully hurt. And now, Dina, you become the speaker and you can pick someone to uh, listen. Okay, well, I'm going to pick Trey, I guess. You're muted, Trey. Yes, excuse the roof stories if you hear any of those. <laughs> okay. What I. So I'm gonna go ahead and share what I see the importance in of empathy in healthcare. First of all, knowing the definition of empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings of another. So that's what that's what I'm expecting right off the bat in in my healthcare experience. Okay, so you think it's important to understand what it means to have empathy in how, what it means to is is important to understand what it what empathy means and which is to kind to have to can you help me there sorry yes so to understand and share the feelings of another so it's, right. to me it's important to understand what that definition means, so I'll have the right expectation starting right. off. To understand and share the feelings of the patient. Yes. So as a healthcare workforce provider, the program we have, we have students that are, we train low-income students to have a career as a patient care technician. So we really try to get across empathy to them because they're the front line for the patient. Okay, that went a little fast for my processing, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, as a program manager for a healthcare program, I wanna teach our students to be empathetic because they're the front line for the patient. Okay, so you want to teach the, teach the children how to, or, I don't know, this, this is, I don't know. <laughs> You want to teach the children how to have, <laughs> how to care mm -hmm. for their patients? Yeah, for the patients. So they're students, but they're adults. They're adult students who are going to be a patient care provider. Right. So I want to teach them the importance of empathy when they walk in, because as several of have said already, the patient has a lot of components going on. I, 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 I really hesitate to interrupt, but I will, because he's not 
from the US, <laughs> some of the things you're saying may not resonate with him. So you may want to slow it down and, and break it down a little bit for him. Okay, thank you. That's, that's very true. <laughs> okay. I guess some of the, yeah, sorry. So this, so I'm talking about a hospital setting, which you, so they, they're, these people are caring for people in the hospital. Yes. So I want them to show empathy when they go into the room. Okay, so you have, so basically you're training adult students and in a, in a hospital setting, so you want them to understand how to care for the patients that come in when they actually have the task of doing that. Yes, I want them to understand that when they walk into the room, even though they're masked, they, the patient can still look at their eyes and tell if they really want to be there or not. Right, so when they walk into to the room, even when they're wearing a mask, they, you want them to be cognizant that the patient may be able to understand their mood by just seeing their eyes. Yes, because they can tell if their eyes are frowned, then they, especially if the patient has saw, you know, they uh, use the bathroom on themselves and they have to be clean and then they're frowning, the patient knows they don't want to do it. Yes, yeah, so it, and a, a, good, a good example would be it, a patient who has wet themselves and then they see the expression on the on the person on the carer on the carer's face as a front uh, if they see that expression on their face then it makes them feel uncomfortable it would make them feel uncomfortable so you're trying to kind of teach them or teach them to understand that all of that comes into play when interacting with it, with patients. Yes, I feel heard and understood. <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing. Ed, Edwin? Yes, listening. Okay. So, like, Linda kind of summed it up for me. Like my experience from my healthcare, well, brought it up, brought it up from me. My experience in the healthcare system has been very simple and feels like it's been good. You know, I, I have been cared for in all of my experiences in the health, in the system itself. So it makes the... Yeah, so I hear you've had a pretty good uh, experience in the healthcare system. Yes, in Berkeley. Um Yeah, and I was trying to think back of times that I, I don't really enjoy going to the hospital uh, or the doctor, I, something that was always a uncomfortable thing for me growing up. But each time I do remember going, I just remember being listened to and cared for, you know, in, yeah. And yeah, so it makes it a little difficult because I think, that in itself is like my summary of the healthcare system. What I, it feels like there's empathy in the healthcare system here in Barbados. Hmm. So you've been, when you were going, you went to the hospital when you were young uh, and uh, you didn't like going to the hospital, but you usually had a good experience and you feel that it's uh, in Barbados, it's an empathic uh, healthcare system. That's been your experience. Yes. Um, and with that, I would like to kind of just bring what is a life for me, something that I can resonate more in, which would be more in the education system. So what I, and it kind of still carries similar things as well for me. The 
the importance of empathy in the education system for me is kind of spending some time as an educator to just not to not focus on academics only, but rather on where each child, each student is, is, is in a particular moment, I guess, where their minds are, where their emotions are in a particular, in a particular moment and hold space for that experience. Mm. Yeah, so you're you're going to shift from the healthcare to uh, the education field where where you work, and uh, that you 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 see the importance of not just focusing on the academic aspect of education, but also where the student is, what their experience is, and and maybe having some empathy there, valuing empathy with the student with the students, understanding them. Yes, understanding their, yeah, their emotion, their emotional state. Um, also, in my, like, I have kind of incorporated it into like, my students recently, and I noticed, you know I me, mean? they, they seem to be able to communicate way better than I think. You know I me mean, as you're reflecting back to them, and that helps me to be able to, I guess, work on academics to suit where they are, which helps them. Well, yes, which helps them a lot to, to, I guess, helps them with motivation to do. What is what is at hand in terms of academics? Mm. So I'm, I'm hearing that you've been empathizing with the students, and that that the effect has been that there it gives them more capacity to do the academic part. Yes, I feel heard. Thank mm. you. Okay, uh, thanks. I'll speak to Justice. Okay, I'm uh, listening. Yeah, so I think you had talked about uh, dan dance or movement, and I've done contact improv dance, which I think is a very impact, uh, very empathic dance because it you're always in contact with the person, and it's total improvised moment to moment. So there, I think it's a very uh, sensitive, uh, empathic type of dance. So you are hearing that I have worked with movement and um, talked about dance, and you you uh, you do con have done contact improv, where you're always touching. You know, there's a point of contact, mm -hmm. and um, it it's a very um, emotive or empathic experience. And I think also because you're always in contact, there's a high degree of oxytocin and you know empathy. You know, listening to someone really raises the level of oxytocin in, in the body. And after I do contact in for prov, I was always like just feeling, you know, totally, you know, on a high. So, you know, in contact improv, you're, because you're usually um, having a point of contact or touching someone, there's, um, you know, release of oxytocin. And so after doing this, contact improv there's always a feeling of um, um elation say, elation <laughs> elation yeah and uh so and also just thinking about the empathy and education i think if we were teaching empathy you know with, with the students and the whole you know creating a culture of empathy in the schools that then in the med schools, they would be, you know, kind of prepared, the students would be learning these skills there and practicing, they'd already have learned that, you know, back in first grade, and they just be building and building those capacities. And then when they're, you know, in med school, they'd already have this, you know, to practice deep, even deepen it. And then when again, it would really affect healthcare in general, because uh, the doctors would have, you know, years of experience with empathy. So the connecting to this empathy in education, that if that were part of education, by the time doctors got to medical school, they would have already had 
years um, becoming empathetic, maybe even from first grade, and that those those doctors, um, their empathy and skills would really sound, uh, impact patients, positively impact patients. Yeah, so I can imagine like in the healthcare that there'd be like empathic or empathy circles and other practices, you know, just embedded. So the physicians have empathy circles with each other because they have a lot of stress and just being heard and understood reduces the stress, feel more connection, you know, addresses conflict. Uh, the patients would, you know, doctors and patients, the staff, and then also the patients would learn how to do empathy circles, for example, and take it home to their families. So they'd be having family empathy circles. So it'd be, you know, creating a whole listening uh, culture, not just, hey, the doctors have to empathize with the patients. That's it. It takes a whole culture. Uh, so what I heard is you imagine in healthcare, there being empathy circles with um, you know, groups that like a physicians are um, where there's a lot of stress and they, they can relate and empathize with one another, but also with um, providers and patients and also where patients could then take um, those skills at home and do empathy circles um, yeah. with their families. Yeah, and creating that whole culture. It's that cultural, whole culture aspect. So really creating that whole culture, the cultural aspect of, of that. Yeah, feel fully heard. Thanks. All right, Justin, you get to speak. Okay, so I'll pick a listener. Okay. Yes. Um, it's, uh, uh, is it uh, Dena or Dina? It's Dina. Okay, Dina, thank you. Um, would you be my li uh, listener? Sure. Okay. Um, well, well, I guess I'll go with what feels alive, um, which is this idea that... Um, you know, building off of what Edwin had said, that patients have tools to have their families empathize with them as part of a positive um, impact of this work. Okay, so you feel like being, having family involved with the empathy circle or empathy part would help with the patient's overall recovery. Yes, I, you know, I remember I had had a boyfriend who after a year of living, you know, with him and having type one, I have type one diabetes. It shocked me how little he really understood um, when we had conflicts about our health, our preferences of what we wanted to do with time and going out specifically. Okay, so when you when you were with your boyfriend, you discovered that even with your type one diabetes, he really didn't understand what you were trying to express when y'all were trying to do activities, whether it was eating or whatever you were trying to do. He he didn't understand the diabetes or what you were feeling or trying to express with your health. You felt like he didn't understand you. Yeah, he didn't understand, and I thought he had because I had been educating him and it seemed like he was cooking for, um, you know, low, low sugar diet. And I was mistaken. Okay. So you had thought, well, you were under the impression that because you had been sharing your the whole healthcare experience and what you require for your diabetes and that he was cooking things that he really understood. But as time went on, you discovered he really did not. Right. And it, it made me realize that that would probably apply to everyone in my life, including my family. Yeah, okay. And so just with him being close to you, not understanding, it made you realize even my, maybe my family doesn't even really understand as well. Right. Um, so uh, I, I wonder with that, experience how probably little I understand about 
like, you know, my mom's migraines or my dad's depression, for example. Okay, so having that experience with your boyfriend who was close to you and even with some family members, then it made you start thinking about how empathetic are you being with your family members, like you said, who have ailments like migraines and the like. Are you really understanding what they're going through? Right. And I, I guess I'm really curious about how this empathy circles and other techniques can really convey the experience as the starting place before, you know, a solution to a problem or is just understanding what it might be like. Okay, so you're interested to see how the empathy circle help you have more understanding. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you can have more understanding so you can help your family understand because the beginning is getting an understanding first before you try to fix it, before you offer solutions, get an understanding. Yes. Yes. This, um, and, you know, and doing it efficiently and in a creative um, way that isn't too traumatic. Okay, so expressing it in a way that's creative and not dramatic or conflicting, so you can be heard. Yes, I, I feel understood. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And now, Dana. Oh, we just... That was I'm sorry, because you were the listener, now you become the speaker and you can pick someone to listen. Okay, so, well, I'll pick Linda. I'll pick you to listen. I don't okay. want to pick on the same people. Okay, so wow. I'll, I've shared about healthcare, so I'll talk about what's live with me. It's the great divide that we are experiencing in this long lasting pandemic. Okay, so now you want to talk about the great divide since we finished with the, or you finished with the uh, medical, you want to talk about the great divide that we're experiencing during this long pandemic. Yes, because even we're just so divided, mask, no mask, vaccination, no vaccination, go, no, no go, we're just divided. Okay, it, so the, the division is mask, no mask, vaccine, no vaccine, travel, not travel, go, not go. We're just divided, it seems like, on everything. Yes, we're divided. Even the people, our family members, even people we're close to, we, we have an opinion about how they choose to approach it, and we're not shy about how, how, stop, how, being hostile about how we express it. Yeah, even to our family and friends, we're, um, we have our opinions and we're not shy about sharing. And sometimes it can be a uh, hostile sharing. Yes, because I know some family members who have cut each other off because it's a constant uh, argument about their choice of how to express themselves during this pandemic. Yeah, you, you recognize that some families, uh, family members have, you know, there's a divide there because they have conflict around the choices that each are making. Yes. And then even people with their work situation, uh, either they have to, if they don't want to get vaccinated, they're forced to get vaccinated or they have to resign from their job, which causes them problems, but also problems for their family because their family feels like you just do what your employer say and get over yourself. Yeah, it, it even overflows into this division over, overflows into our work uh, environment where, you know, some places they are mandating that people have in employees have to get vaccinated or they lose their jobs. And then, and that creates a divide in the family where some think just get the vaccination and get over it because you need the job. Yes. Or some of the teachers in the school system, they're dealing with the students because a lot of the students are not vaccinated and then they don't know properly how to wear the mask. Yeah, even uh, in our school system, we have children that are uh, students. Um, some are vaccinated, some are not. And some of them, you know, wear masks. And when they do wear masks, they don't know how to wear, it wear them properly. 
Right. And then they're not being instructed on how to wear them properly. My two-year-old granddaughter know how to wear her mask. She keep it on her nose. She's been <laughs> like, you got to keep that. Because her daycare has every other week they're having to shut down because of a several COVID outbreak. So my, for my two-year-old granddaughter can wear her mask, whether you vaccinated or not, just if you go around, be around people, just put your mask on. It's like you, you're struggling wondering why uh, people don't teach the kids how to wear the mask. You have a two-year-old granddaughter and even she knows to keep it covered over her nose. And what daycare, that the daycare she's going to, it's like every other week they're having a shutdown because somebody um, has tested positive. Yes, I just feel like I hope this doesn't last all the way through 2022, but it looks like it's going that way. But it's uh, it's an interesting pandemic. And so, but it, I just hate that it's keeping us divided. Yeah, you're hoping <laughs> that when we go into 2022, this pandemic will be under control. And, um, you know, you're, you're finding it's an interesting pandemic situation. Yes, thank you. I, have, I feel like I've been heard. Thank you. Okay, I want to um, speak with Trey. Yes, and please. I'm speaking on, you know, what's the medical, the educational part, all of this, the culture of empathy is what Edwin is talking about or was talking about. Right. You're talking about the medical, the educational, all together as it relates to the, the culture of empathy. And yes. you, Edwin was talking about that. Right. Because right now in the this, what I want to call a controlled environment, we're learning the process of listening and reflecting. So you're saying that in this controlled environment, we're learning how to listen empathetically. Yes. And you have to, I found personally that you have to practice it over and over and over again so it becomes natural for you. So you have to practice it over and over continuously because in that that way it becomes more natural a more natural part of you exactly um as justin was talking about his family and his boyfriend i you know I, it came to me uh there's a difference between hearing and listening and as justin was justice was talking justice. about yeah yeah I'm sorry. talking about his boyfriend and his family you you notice there's a difference between hearing and listening right that there's a difference between hearing and listening yes um someone told me one time you can hear a baby cry but listening is intentional so as someone once told you, you can, <laughs> where did that just drop off? You head? hear a baby cry. Yes. As someone once told you, you hear a baby cry. But, but listening it, is intentional. But listening is intentional. Yes. Um, and sometimes we think because we say something and people nod that they list, they are listening and understanding, but they're actually just hearing. Right. Sometimes we we see people nodding at what we're saying, and we think that they've they've been listening, but really they've just they it, it hearing. Right. They're just hearing. Yes. And in the educational system, I have a niece who's been teaching for 22 years. So you have a niece that's been in the educational system that's been teaching for two years, 22? 22. 
22 years. Yes. And I can appreciate the fact that teachers could benefit from an empathy circle. And you can appreciate that teachers can benefit from an empathy circle. Yes, because they are told you have to teach to the test rather than teaching for students to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been told that you have to teach to, to the test as opposed to teaching to learn. Yes, thank you. I feel fully heard, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. All right, uh, and now you get to be the speaker and you pick a listener. Okay, I'll pick justice. Really out to listen. Okay, I am listening. Yes, thank you. As Linda was sharing, I felt a lot of resonance in what she was saying. So, as Linda was sharing, you felt a lot of resonance in what she was saying. Yes, and it made me think that it is very, like in the education system, from my experience, it could benefit so much from a culture of empathy, whether it be between teacher to teacher, parent to teacher, or teacher to student. So um, it, it really occurred to you that in the education system, the empathy could be, um, so, or the listening circle could be so important, um, whether it be teacher to teacher, teacher to parent, or teacher to student. Yes, the culture of empathy, yes. The culture uh, of empathy. Yes. Um, and yeah, I just like caught in a lot of thought about it while I'm here speaking about it. Um, you, you also mentioned as, so in the, in the education system, there's just so many different facets, you know what I mean, that I can really highlight right now. And it is difficult to pull one without the, the others, pull one area in which the empathy could improve. So what I'm hearing is as you're thinking about the culture of empathy, there's a lot that's coming up and that there's how to have, there's many parts of the education um, system and how can they even look at one and not, what I'm hearing is not looking at the others. Yeah, it seems like they're super like interlocked because being on the online platform, which is what I am presently teaching on, I really could see so much benefit from like having empathy circles with the parents, you know, they like, set up the set up some circles with parents to hear what their experiences are as it relates to the online platform in relation to them and their kids as well from that perspective. <clears throat> so your um you you're particularly um you know in in online platform in your teaching and um thinking about how could empathy circles um, could be really useful whether the um, parents are coming on between them and and students um, because they're everything what everything's so interlinked 
Yeah, so I was particularly saying that it would be super helpful. I feel like it would be pretty helpful for to have to run a circle with parents to to kind of get their experiences as it relates to the child and the online and the online experience. Okay, so, so what I'm hearing is in particular, having empathy circles with the parents would be really useful to understand, you know, how, what their experiences with their students, but, or their children, but also with the online platform. Yes, I feel heard, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so now I pick a. Yes, you 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 speak, and you get to pick a listener, and you okay. can go back or whatever you know. Um. Okay. Uh, well, I'll go with um you, Linda. Oh, okay. All right. I'm here. I'm listening. Okay. So. Um, uh, I guess I'm going to go with what's alive. Yeah, it's, it's uh, um, I'm even That's noticing fine. how things evolve as we're doing this. There's a seeing all the connections between hearing one another really listen. And so there's a thread. Okay, you're you're recognizing a thread that's going on in this empathy circle but between listening and hearing each other. There's a thread. Right. And uh, as a facilitator myself, I'm wondering in other um, empathy contexts and exercises that we've had enough time now, time, this has been enough time to start to relate to one another. And as a facilitator, you're wondering if we've, we're having enough time uh, to relate to each other or one another. Right, or I'm feeling that we are. I'm feeling that we are, and I'm realizing it's about, you know, this is an hour and it's multiple roles that we're interchanging. Okay, you can see the connection in this, this circle, this one hour session uh, that we are uh, connecting and um, we do have enough time. Right. And so, you know, I, I'm wondering how to do this with more, I, I, I'm understanding why now this number is also four to five really makes sense. Okay, so now you're understanding why the circle should be small or it benefits uh, the people if the circle is small. Four to five right. people is a good number. Right, and, and I'm also, you know, I'm working with a patient advocacy group um, at a healthcare company and we often have, um, some people talk so much more than other people. <laughs> Okay, you are with this uh, this group um, at the the uh, medical group uh, with patients or whatever other support group, and you're recognizing that some people talk uh, they take up more time than other people, and you can appreciate this limited time for each person to speak and be heard. Yes. <laughs> And it's so simple because it really doesn't target anyone. It, 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 it's all in the structure. <laughs> okay. And, it, and so with this structure, this process, it doesn't uh, call anyone out. Uh, you, they know the rules or they know the parameters. And so it's fair for everybody. Everybody has an equal amount of time. Right. And... I, you know, I, I'm wondering, I'm really, I'm already thinking about how can I propose this? Cause I'm leading these patient design studios for the next year. 
<laughs> okay, so you're already thinking of ways to incorporate this empathic listening into the design um, program that you're going to be heading up for the next year? Right, these design studios where we have five hours and it's on one topic and we have contribution from everyone. Okay, so it's a five hour session and you get contribution from everyone and you are already trying to figure out how to make, to incorporate this into that, yes. that exercise. Yes, I, I feel understood. Okay. All righty. Um, I will pick um, Edwin mm -hmm. listening. to listen to me. Um, I have so much going on in my head uh, about the medical and the educational uh, system, I guess, because um, with my niece being in that educational system, I, I, I understand what she's going through. Mm, so there's a lot coming up for you around the empathy and the healthcare, as well as the education system because of your niece is in that area. Yes. Uh, recently, uh, they started giving vaccines to five-year-olds, you know, the elementary, I would say, uh, school <clears throat> kids. And I heard them say on the news that the people that are giving the shots, they know how to give shots to children. Mm, so they're starting to give uh, shots to five-year-olds and some of the year, and they, they're saying, oh, they, they, the people who are giving the shots know how to do it. And I'm hearing a little bit of skepticism maybe. No, not, no? I was surprised mm, that mm -hmm. there is a, apparently a technique to calming the child down and making them more accepting of the shot, the, the actual shot. Oh, so there's, uh, you've heard there's a technique of how to give the shot to, to the children to calm them down and to do how to do it well. Yes, and, and I really hadn't thought about it because when, you know, I got my shots, you just, and I hate needles but you sit down and they ask you which arm and they stick it in and, you know, give you the card when to come back. Yeah, so you didn't even think about it before. You, you just, when you got your shot, you just went there, they stuck it in and that was sort of it. You don't, didn't think of the, what it would be like for children. Yes, and so even um, they had Big Bird from Sesame Street talking to the kids about well, you know, Big Bird has had his shot and he's encouraging the kids to have their shot. So children are able to relate better with the animated characters that they see on TV. Mm -hmm. So you saw that they were using Big Bird to kind of show the children what was involved and they're using that as a way to educate the children. Yes. And... Um, I never thought about, you know, making a child comfortable and getting a shot. And the ones that they're showing on TV, the kids aren't crying or screaming or anything. They're just like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you never thought about that. How do you give shots to, to these little kids? And, and uh, the ones you've seen, at least the pictures, they've just been very, okay. You know, getting yeah, a shot, the, no, no okay. tears. Yeah. Um, Amazing, amazing. Because as I say, I hate needles. And when they draw blood, I go in every time and I say, I'm going to act like an adult. But when I see that needle coming toward me, <laughs> I turn into a child. Yeah, yeah you, you, you know, you, when you see a needle coming at you, you just turn into a child. It's uh, scary. Uh, scary. It's, yeah. Maybe, so, maybe. um, you know, children are very um, resilient and smarter than we give them credit for. Yeah, so you're just saying that children are resilient and, you know, that they're, you, they're more smarter than we give them credit for or more resilient. Yes. yes. 
And so uh, thank you, I feel fully heard. Okay, and we just have a couple of minutes. I don't know if yes. you want to do a quick debrief or yes. anything. Yes, I saw that. That's the reason I cut it short. So mm -hmm. do y'all want to just take turns saying, but when we go into the larger group, you, we're going to debrief again, but just in this group, what you got out of this experience, good, bad, nothing, whatever. We'll start with Dina. It was good. It was good. I'm going to use it with my next uh student class for empathy because people listen or they hear but they don't listen so listen. they need to listen yeah especially to their patients even when the patient not talking they talking so just like you talked about the crying or whoever talked about the baby crying if you're listening yeah. you know if they hungry or they done pooped you know what to do you know because the cry is different the cry is are they in pain the cry is different so listening matters yes plus when you hear baby cry you don't think, I mean, they just cry. You're, it's not nothing intentional. They just cry and you hear it. Justice? I really got how important brevity is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and really being in a state where I'm not, I, there was a few points where I was thinking about other things mm -hmm. and I couldn't hear you, Trey. I could not listen to you, Trey. I was like, wait a second my thought totally drowned out a few of your words and I couldn't piece it back. So, you know, setting the conditions for yourself and the brevity really stand out. And that's true. We tend to, our minds get to going and it, that's what's intentional. You have to make your mind stop and focus on what's being said to you. It's easy, it's harder than, than you think sometimes. Uh, Trey? Yeah, along the same lines as that, like, I would be listening so attentively and then like there would be like a, a slight distraction in front of me and I would just be like, the would just be gone. So it really, it really brought up for me that, you know, me the grounding of the mind and the focus, you know, like being really you know, constantly pulling yourself into that presence and kind of like replaying things in, replaying things in my head as I hear it as well, finding a way to get it done like that to keep the information kind of resonating in me to capture the best. Other yeah. circle, other people in the circle, some people will write down, jot down words as they hear so they will remember when they reflect. So. Uh, Edwin? Uh, yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, Justice, Trey, Dina, that uh, about your different places where you're seeing of where you can implement empathy circles. You know, I, I just love hearing that, that, oh, kind of spread this because that's kind of what we're trying to do is really spread it. So, you know, contact us. We're glad to help out in, in that and also, you know, take the training that helps, you know, to kind of network and kind of collaborate. So, yeah. And just, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Edwin. Oh, that was it. I'm just closing the room. So we have one okay. minute. So, Justice, if you ever do a circle and you need facilitators, just uh, hit us up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a we list do of like 400 people. So you put it out and people will come and help yes. uh, get you started. Yes. So you can break it down to four or five people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Edwin's going to bring everybody back and we will have another opportunity to debrief 30 seconds, boom, boom, boom. So we get everybody in. Yeah, we got 25 seconds before everybody oh, comes back Oh, in. okay. We got 25 seconds. Okay. Well, I want to say this is... <laughs> oh, sorry, every circle is, is unique for me. Every circle is good. And I, the culture, we need to make empathy... There's not an area, listening to you all in other circles, there's not an area in our lives where empathy will not work. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we'll now do the debrief. Uh, Linda, you were going to lead that, and I'll put the question in to the chat. Yes. 
Uh, is everybody back? Okay, we're gonna go go around in about 30 seconds. Everybody, um, as I call on you, just tell me about your experience, what you got out of the, uh, the circle or whether you didn't get anything, but I know you did get something. So um, we're gonna share on um, learning or insights from the empathy circle that you received. And we'll start with Sister, if you can, uh, can you show, can you, can we see you? Sister KS? Can you sue? Yeah, I was gonna go and do something quickly. Okay, um, I'll come back to you. Okay. All right, Maria? Yeah, I can share with you guys that uh, the circle today was so deep and uh, was like uh, literally like escalating because in the beginning was like, uh, you know, exploring the surface and then deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. We share some personal experience. I was very sorry. I'm very sorry because I know some sorry about my friends and this is very, very, I mean, sad because that was a very strong argumentation. But uh, even the fact that we shared is, uh, is part of the empathetic circle, I guess. And this is, it, this is powerful and this is, uh, you know, nice because when you share something, it's like if you divide the weight, right? This is what people say about empathy. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very amazing that we are here because we can really share life and uh, experience and so, empathy, okay. of course. It was powerful. You're saying the circle was powerful for you. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Laura? Hi. Um, so I, I uh, really uh, felt heard and relieved that I felt heard. I felt it was very deep. Um, and while we were speaking, Elizabeth came up with the, uh, talked about a book that she had used before. And um, I have friends that worked in the prison system and I have to wonder how well the empathy circles would work in a, in a prison setting to prevent violence. Yeah, yeah, damn. All right, thank you. Um, and I'm finna mess up your name, G-H-E-O-R-G-H-E. -E. I'm not gonna even try. Mm, you can pronounce it for me. That, that's George. Jo um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, yeah. Um, I, I found I found the uh, the the events very um, open, genuine, honest, informing. Um, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm I do apologize for my English U uplifting <laughs> in a in a spiritual way. Okay. Um, brought me a, a sense of awareness in terms of. Uh, in terms of what's happening into into me to my mind and it's yeah it's it's, it's a wonderful experience and i i would like to uh, i would like to be part of the whole community all right thank you george appreciate it you. we would love to have you elizabeth um, i found it um, a, a wonderful experience we had two healthcare practitioners and um, several people speak from the point of view of the patient. And it was really um, a wonderful difference of perspective to, to listen to. Um, and it made me self-aware about how hard it is for me to just listen yeah. um, it, and not be offering advice or, you know, whatever. It, it takes a lot of concentration. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful thing to do. And I hope to continue. And we, we hope to see you again. Yes. Listening is intentional. Dana. Yes, it was a good experience for me. It, it uh, brought up, I facilitate quite a few groups, but one of them, we share our life story and we have three rules, confidentiality, don't interrupt and don't fix. We just listen. So this reminded me of that. So it's a good experience. 
And I, I plan on using it in the healthcare program that I run for the students to do these groups. So when they get ready to go to the hospital, they'll understand the patient's perspective. And they'll be able to show empathy for the patient. Thank you. Great. Justice? It was um, so nice to have a simple structure that is very well conceived, you know, and that it can carry it. And I would be so interested to see how, what the threads of commonalities would be in different groups yeah. to keep doing this, even on this subject. Cause I was surprised by what came up with educators and healthcare professionals. Yes. yes. Floyd? Um, I mirror everything that everyone has said and um, realize uh, that I really would like to learn this. I would like to become a student and really deepen, deepen the art of listening. I've spent a lot of time listening in my life, working with a lot of different groups of people, men, women, mixed groups, children, adults, survivors of different traumas. And this is a great exercise to realize how well I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to everyone. I will, I, will, I will definitely want to sign up for this. Thank you. Lord, you are not alone. Okay. Trey? Yeah. Um, a key insight for me is a lot of the areas in my life, in my job, in my interaction, they play, where the practice, when empathy, where empathy circles could really lend a strong hand on how to move things forward in a more connected, a powerful way, you know? Yeah, I think that Thank would be. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia? Oh, you were training. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't see the E. Vera? Yeah, it was um, it was a great empathy circle today. I, I mean, it, it went very deep. I mean, we we had an amazing conversation and um, I just I, I feel very connected with the group that I was with and and it was just it was such an amazing experience. I mean, I, I think every single time we do this, it's been an amazing experience for me. And I absolutely love this process. So thank you very much. Connecting with strangers. Yeah, that's great. Sister. Hi, it's Kenya. So it's fine. Yeah, that was a really amazing experience. And that connection that um, I had with the participants and the shared experiences, not only about the questions that were posed for the topic today, but or this evening in London, but the fact is that we have shared experiences that span local and global, which was absolutely amazing. And that was yeah. the connecting thing and how yeah. we as human beings relate to certain things depending, depending on our journey that's also shared yeah. and yeah it was it was quite amazing so thank yeah. you all right do we have time for the uh yes okay um melissa tell us about your experience thank you linda yes i think it was amazing uh, it was amazing to hear people's you know, people's perception of what is actually going on. And not just as patients, but as healthcare providers, how well each one is relating. I'm looking to see and hoping that this will change for the better. And that was wonderful. Thank you, everyone. It was a wonderful group. Bill? Yeah, we were talking about healthcare, and it, it actually affected uh, the group a bit um, as one of the members had to leave because of an issue. Um, and I'm just really appreciative for the deep sharing and, um, and the courage and the bravery that everybody brought to the circle. Um, 
to you know expose themselves and at that same time help others so thank you all right thank you bill cynthia like so many others i just had a wonderful experience uh with participants in the empathy circle and i'm, I'm so struck with how quickly um we can share deeper experiences um that aren't just small talk at all that are much yeah. more about experiences of the heart and um i just really loved the openness honesty uh and um, vulnerability that people in the circle were able to able to share today. Really love the experience. Thank you, Larry. Yes, I agree. Empathy circles are brilliantly simple at opening the heart of human beings. And I'd like to post the information Elizabeth was sharing with us from the book. And she sent me a message, and this is the book. So I want to share that in the chat. I am just eternally grateful to be here. Thank you all for everything we shared. Thank you. Okay, is the book Preventing Violence? Yes. Okay, it's in the chat. All right, uh, Dwayne. Yes, um, I had a really enjoyable experience. I was in a a group with people, um, Celine, Cynthia, and Kenya, that I've uh, had shared conversation with before through the empathy circle. So it was a very comfortable group, and we were able to. We we started out on a very deep level and just continued um, to connect through the entire process. And so, uh, like to say thank you to Edwin for making this possible and also for the people in the group who you know again gave me a helped me to have another rewarding experience and and reminded me how important it is to come back and to continue to have these conversations Edwin yeah uh I'm I just love the seeing everyone's common humanity like when we just when people hear each other understand each other you just see the the common humanity of everyone in, in the world and uh, I appreciate that and so grateful for all the facilitators who come back and kind of help with with this uh, movement so I just yeah really grateful for that okay I want to say every circle is unique I love I, I haven't had a bad experience yet. There is, as Justin said, a thread. Someone will say something and others in the group will connect. And as Kenya said, uh, it just proves that there's only one race. That's the human race. And we can all connect. We all have commonalities. So thank you. OK, thanks, uh, Linda. And uh, so I'm uh, going to. For next steps, I'm going to put in uh, the uh, a link there. That's the uh, next cohort. If you check the website, the link to the website, you'll see that we have two cohorts. The next one is uh, November 20th. Uh, that is now actually over full, but you can get on the wait list for it. There's maybe a chance that somebody uh, drops out, so you could get a space there. You want to be sure that you've had two taken part in two empathy circles. So taking part today counts. And we'll have another one on Monday. So you can come to that. So you're welcome to, to uh, come to that one. It's the same time, same URL. And then uh, if you, there's a link there to the feedback form. So if everyone would uh, just click on that, actually just click on that link right now while you're if, you, if you're able to, and then you'll see it's the feedback form and you just go down, add your email, give everybody a chance to add your email, just put your email in there. I'm gonna give it a few seconds just to sort of prime the pump here. And uh, then you'll just continue. You can, we're gonna, we'll, we'll end. And then you can go and just uh, fill that out. It adds your email, your, kind of your level of interest. And that just lets us know kind of how interested you are, what you'd like to take part in. Also, we get your email and we can add you to our uh, email list. We have about 400 
uh, on it. I think about 300, 250 are facilitators. So if you want to hold your own empathy cafes, you can reach out to the group and there's always people who will come and uh, help you facilitate uh, your empathy circle. So we're here to support you in, in spreading the practice and, and taking the training. So Linda, did you have something you had? A, yes, a I put in the chat, um, Edwin is going to do a presentation uh, to my professional group of mediators uh, Monday at 6.30 Central Time. Uh, and I just put that out there. Um, the focus is empathy in mediation. So uh, I don't. See I copied that. it from did an I... email. Hopefully that link showed up. If it didn't, just uh, email me and mm -hmm. I will um, send it to you. I don't see the post. If it maybe you sent it to the white room or someone specific, or no, I sent it no. to everyone. Oh, okay, um, well, it's raining. Go on. Uh, on. Sorry. Uh, let me see. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we it's definitely want one. folks it's, to come to that. <laughs> it's TCAM, T C A M. That's Tarrant County Association of Mediators. So it's in there. Um, um, could you also post it for the cohort, a uh, cohort uh, 12D group? The link? Yes. Okay. Oh, you're talking to Edwin. Oh, okay. Oh, well, this is the, the link to the cohort. And oh, are you requesting that uh, Linda send it to the whole cohort? Uh, yes. <laughs> I see. Okay. I can, I'll, I'll connect with you afterwards, Linda. To, okay. For that list. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, that's it. If there's unless there's something else, uh, Bill, any final? No. Uh, if you want uh, any empathy in schools, I put my uh, contact in the chat, and I'd be happy to help you in whatever way I can. Thanks. So our next open cafes are going to be always on Monday because we start the this time slot the training uh, cohort, and uh, uh, January third is the. Uh, the, the Monday cohort will start then, that's 13B. So we'd like to get uh, a group portrait. If uh, uh, Kenya, if you'd be willing to turn your video on so we can get a group portrait with the whole, everyone, just so we can, let's see, just turn your video on, get a, a portrait. If you have any questions- I'm you trying can to open up the box and it's not opening. Uh-oh, okay. I, I that's okay. Okay. Well, it's technology for you. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get a group portrait here for sure. All right. There you go. Yay, there, there we go. go. Yay, yeah. celebrate. Yeah, yeah have yeah. a good week. Okay, Bye. take care. Thanks for being here. Thank See you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Have Bye. a great one, everyone. Have a great weekend. Too. Good to meet you, Justice. The... Likewise. Really interested in the design. Bye, George. Yeah. <laughs> well, be in touch. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Good night. Okay, bye, Maria. Good night. Bye. See you in the training next week.